Okay, so a month or so ago, I checked out the Antec DF600, which is part of Antec's latest lineup of cases using their new Flux or Flow Luxury platform. Now, they also sent over the DP502, which is the one we're going to be checking out today, and it's from the same lineup. That means it comes with five fans included, three of which are addressable RGB, and it also has an intake on the PSU shroud, which pulls in air through the side of the case and up into the main chamber. So let's start with aesthetics. So kind of interesting, it actually looks a little bit retro in my opinion with this front grille and even has a door which covers the, wait for it, optical drive bay. Haven't seen one of those in a while. I wasn't too keen on it to begin with, but then once I'd seen the finished build, it kind of grew on me. I like these chrome accents as well. They make it look a little bit more premium. And we also have this brushed metal effect, which is fairly convincing despite it actually being plastic. Yeah, definitely got some retro vibes. Let me know what you think to it down in the comments. So as I mentioned, this case does come with five included fans, which at this price point is really nice, especially when three of them are addressable RGB. Now the three 120mm ARGB fans come pre-installed in the front of the case. There's another 120mm fan in the back, and the last one comes in a little box. Now this one is a reverse airflow fan, so normally air would be pushed out of the side with the frame on it, but in this case it's reversed. This fan is designed to be mounted on top of the PSU shroud and will pull air in from the bottom chamber. Now you can actually have up to nine fans in this case in total, which is pretty impressive. You can also fit radiators up to 360 millimeter in the front or at the top. Although if you are mounting a 360 millimeter at the top, you will need to remove the optical drive bay bracket. Motherboard support is pretty standard, ATX, MATX, Mini ITX. Max GPU length is 405 millimeters. So even the latest cards will fit. I have seen someone put a 3090 in this case with no problems. Max PSU length is 205 millimeters. It can get a little bit tight down in the bottom of the case, although you can remove the three and a half inch hard drive cage to free things up a bit. There's actually quite a lot of options for storage in this case. There are three SSD mounting points in the mid section. You can also mount a three and a half inch drive in the top left. And then obviously you have your hard drive cage in the bottom, which can take up to two three and a half inch drives. While we're around the back, I'll show you the built in fan hub. It's actually a combo hub for power and RGB. On one side, you've got six power connectors and on the other side, six addressable RGB headers. Unfortunately, the power connectors are only DC, not PWM. So if you are looking for a quiet build, don't run all of your fans off this. The ARGB headers on the other hand work as you'd expect and there's actually a button on the top of the case which lets you cycle through the built-in presets. It's pretty neat though if you prefer you can connect the hub to your motherboard to control the RGB from there instead. Speaking of RGB, you remember those chrome accents on the front grille I told you about? Well those are actually RGB too. I was quite surprised when I first saw them light up. Also, I don't think I've mentioned it yet, but that front panel is removable for access to those front fans. It just pulls off. Four dust filters are included. There's one in the bottom, which just pulls out. The rest are magnetic. There's one for the top of the case, one for the side intake vent, and another optional one for the front. Although personally, I would leave this one off in the interests of better airflow. On the top of the case, we have two USB 3.0 ports, a headphone and microphone jack, along with the power and LED control button that I mentioned earlier. And you'll probably notice that all of the ports have dust covers on them, which is a nice addition. To be fair, the overall build quality is quite good for a fairly budget case. I wouldn't say it necessarily feels premium, but it certainly doesn't look cheap. In terms of cable management, we do have some Velcro straps to help keep things tidy. Clearance here is 34.5 millimeters for the front section and 26.5 millimeters towards the back. Provided you're not using like a million RGB hubs back here, you shouldn't have much trouble. And in general, it's a fairly easy case to build in. Cutouts are located in sensible places. Everything is easily accessible. So in the completed build, I'm running a Ryzen 5 3600 and 2060 Super, a 360mm AIO with the radiator mounted at the front of the case, 16 gigabytes of Team Group Nighthawk memory, a 750 watt PSU, also from Antec, B450 Tomahawk Max motherboard, a 500 gigabyte NVMe M.2 drive, and a total of eight fans. The three in the front are the pre-installed ARGB ones, the remaining five are Antex Prism fans. So in terms of airflow, we've got two fans mounted on the top of the PSU shroud. They are pulling air through the intake vent on the side of the case and feeding it up into that main chamber, which significantly improves GPU temps, by the way. Of course, we've also got fresh air coming in from the front of the case, and then we have our top and back exhaust. So it's quite a lot of fans in a case of this size, but you do get some decent airflow. 
and that's despite having that optical drive bay door closed on the front panel. So here are my temperatures. Idle, we're looking at 28 degrees for the CPU and 33 for the GPU, and under load 67 for the CPU and 61 for the GPU. So well within ideal parameters, and actually the cooling performance on this case seems to be very close to that of the DF600. So once again, I think Antec have managed to produce a rather nice budget-friendly case. Obviously, it is based on the same platform as the DF600. So the actual chassis and basic features are going to be more or less the same. But let me know what you think to it in the comments. Would you consider the DP502 as your next PC case? I think the aesthetics in particular are quite subjective. I've heard some people really liking how this thing looks and others not so much. But those five included fans are quite appealing and I think Antec are onto something good with this new Flux platform. I'm excited to see more. If you want to check this thing out, I'll have a link down in the description. If you've got any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments and I'll try my best to get back to you. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating would be much appreciated. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more. I've got loads more content on the way. You can stay up to date with all the behind the scenes stuff on Instagram and Twitter at Tech Tesseract. With that being said, hope you guys have an awesome week. I'll catch you all in the next one. Oh,